Well, since the Ryder Cup is this week, we thought we'd do an all-time winner's weird and what edition of the Ryder Cup. This week, Bob, you have the tea. All right, Adam. Well, when you're talking about all-time Ryder Cup, uh, you've got to think of all-time records and all-time performers, and one of those is definitely Ian Poulter, whose Ryder Cup uh, legacy really is almost bigger than his regular PGA Tour European Tour records. But he was an ultimate performer and none better than in 2012 at Medina when the Europeans uh, created that miracle at Medina and had that huge comeback on Sunday, winning eight singles matches. But it really was keyed the day before. The last match on Saturday, Poulter was partnered with Rory McIlroy and he rolled off five consecutive birdies to beat the U.S. team. And at one point, Mark, it looked like his eyes were going to pop out of his head. He was so excited and screaming at the victory. Amazing, Bob. The, you know, I'm sure his eyes popped out like that uh, last year when the live check cleared as well. But, I mean, uh, I have uh, confidence now that you and I still have a chance when you consider that Ian Poulter away from the Ryder Cups, probably like a three or four handicap when it comes to ball striking. So I'm not giving up hope for Team GTC. Well, that day he was certainly something else. And uh, my weird takes us to uh, Boo Weekly, who's not a guy you think of when you think of the Ryder Cup, but he was a good performer. And in 2008, he did something a little different from him, maybe from his sort of Western, Southern, uh, I don't know, lifestyle or whatever. He took a swing off the first tee in his match, and all of a sudden the golf club kind of got into an awkward position, and he just decided to go with it. So he rode like a horse giving himself the whip on the rear end there as he rode down the first fairway, much to the delight of the fans. And that is perhaps the best memory we have whenever we think of Boo Weekly, right, Adam? I mean, is there any other memory you have of him other than that? Not really, no. And I remember a couple of years ago at the WM Phoenix Open, Harry Higgs also did the same thing. So Boo Weekly, one of those unsung heroes, if you will, in Ryder Cup history. Yeah, he went to, uh, won two and a half points for the U.S. that team. And then my what this week is, uh, what do we make of Jeff Overton, another guy who you don't think of too much when you think of the Ryder Cup, what do you think of his celebration when he holed the shot while paired alongside Bubba Watson back in 2017? Listen to this. Overton has been one of the most impressive players for Pavin thus far, especially on the green where he's just made a number of long putts. And how about that for an approach? Move, Maddie! Yeah! Come on! Come on, baby! Come on! Yeah! Woo! <laughs> that is one kind of celebration. And by the way, if you've never, if you haven't heard much about Jeff Overton, it's because he had back surgery in 2017. He got an infection from that, and he hasn't played. Well, actually, he returned to play finally in 2022. All right, Mark, the T is now yours. All right, Bob, uh, I'm going to go with my winner this week, all-time Ryder Cup, and I'm going to go with Tony Jacklin. And uh, some people remember the name Tony Jacklin from the concession with uh, Jack Nicholas in the Ryder Cup, a great sign of sportsmanship between the two players. But for me, Tony Jacklin, being the captain of that Ryder Cup team in the 80s into the early 90s, yes, he got Bernard Longer and Nick Faldo and Sandy Lyle and Seve Ballesteros, and all of a sudden he's continental European tour players that joined the European Ryder Cup team, which uh, was a pretty easy team to captain. But Bob, I started watching the Ryder Cup when I was 10 years old in 1985. I didn't know what it was. Um, and I don't know, Bob, without Tony Jacklin and his leadership as a captain, if this event is what it is today, Bob. We, we hear about captains basically today doing one and done. You know, the they don't captain very much. Tony Jacklin did four in a row. Can you imagine the commitment to this event and to the uh, the growth of this as a real bona fide us versus them competition? And really made that Ryder Cup squad for Europe think that they could win. Okay, my weird. I mean, okay, uh, it's been a, the last twenty four months have been a weird two years for Phil Mickelson, but I go back to 2004 and Hal Sutton in the experiment of Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson as a pair, sending them out at the time, the top two players in the world, and it just didn't connect. They were not the best of friends. 
The rumors on the street back in those days were similar to the rumors these days about gambling issues with Phil, taking some money from Callaway just days before the Ryder Cup and switching equipment, uh, money that apparently he needed. Uh, we'll leave it at, at that. But it was weird, it was awkward, and it was an experiment gone wrong from the start. At one point, Phil Mickelson over at a different golf course or a different driving range trying to learn Tiger Woods' golf ball absolutely bizarre okay and by what scully every week we say the first good decision on the golf course it starts in the closet well you can't say that about the 1999 u.s Ryder cup team adam this might be the worst team uniform in sports history i would rather wear the astros from the 80s the canucks from the 90s give me the hartford whaler cooper alls adam this shirt is horrific it's uh, that's one way to describe it for sure. My big question, boys, is what shirt lost to that one back in 1999 when when everyone is holding up two shirts saying, hmm, which one works? We're going to go with that one. I just don't <laughs> understand the thought process behind there. That shirt. Oh, my God. <laughs> Goodness. Okay, as for me, boys, my all-time winner's weird and what Ryder Cup edition. My winner goes to the match back in 2016, Sunday singles, Rory McIlroy against Patrick Reed, where the emotions were running high. Uh, on Saturday during a session, Rory McIlroy bowed to the crowd. Here he is on the eighth hole in Sunday singles. Similar to Ian Poulter, it looked like his eyes were going to fall out of his head pretty much. He was yelling, I can't hear you to the crowd. I can't hear you. What did Patrick Reed do on top of that? No, 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 no. He wagged his finger. What a moment <laughs> that was. Those two guys, the emotions. Well, they were running high, to say the least. Okay, my weird this week, similar to you, Mark, my weird also is Phil Mickelson, who has a, a pretty darn good Ryder Cup career. But back in 2014, let's just say him and Tom Watson didn't quite see eye to eye. We have uh, strayed from a winning formula in 08 for the last three Ryder Cups, and, and we, uh, we need to consider maybe getting back to that formula that, that helped us play our best. Nobody here was in, in any decision. I had a different philosophy uh, as far as uh, being a captain of this team. Uh, you know, it takes 12 players to win. It's not pods, it's 12 players. And I, I felt I, I based my uh, decisions on, uh, uh, yes, I did talk to the players, and, but uh, my vice captains are very instrumental in making decisions. Talk about awkward. That was just flat out weird. Now, Bob, we've seen uh, in team events in the past, we were sitting together, actually, Bob, back at the 2017 President's Cup, where the guys uh, definitely celebrated a little before stepping in front of the microphone. But this exchange with Phil Mickelson and Tom Watson, one of the stranger ones we've ever seen, eh, Bob? Well, you know, being a captain is a, is a thankless job. When you win, you're the smartest guy in the room. When you lose, you know, you've, you're the, the, the big dummy who couldn't put it all together. So I don't know about, uh, about this, but certainly changes came after this. And uh, that whatever, whatever they did fix, it's certainly working because they've been playing pretty well, at least on home soil. Yeah, they certainly have. Okay, Bob, well, you're earlier in the segment, you brought up the 2012 Ryder Cup. That's where I'm also going with my what, where Rory McIlroy almost missed his tee time for the Sunday singles in 2012. He had to take a police escort to barely make his tee time. He was there with a couple minutes to spare. He did what all of us mostly do. He hit a couple of putts on the practice screen, took a couple swings with the driver, and then what did he do? He actually won his match that day, all a part of the miracle at Medina. Mark, what are your memories of Rory McIlroy on that day? I mean, I just remember him pulling in with the with the escort and the car pulling up last minute. I think he vaguely, I remember him blaming the Golf Channel for the <laughs> clock they used or something. But I don't blame Rory Adam because at one point this summer when I was in the peak of my schedule traveling for, for PGA Tour Live and Radio, I remember being at Pearson International and I've jumped time zones a few times and was in a few different states and I got to the lounge and I went up and I looked at the screen to see if my flight was on time 
and I forgot where I was going. So it can happen. <laughs> well, and that day, too, on the first tee, the fans were chanting Central Time Zone to Rory McIlroy. <laughs> what a day that was. It's so much fun edition of Winners Weird and What. Golf Talk Canada continues when we come back. Winners Weird and What is brought to you by PGA Tour Canada. The road to the PGA Tour starts here.